Today it's a special day for me because I almost became officially Swiss. Hi and welcome everybody to my channel. My name is Stefan. I'm a medical doctor working in Geneva, in Switzerland. This is my channel. If you are new to it, please subscribe and have a look on the other videos that are in Italian but subtitled in English. Well, let's say most of them. As I said, today it's a special day and no, I'm not joking, because from today I can benefit from the same rights of a Swiss citizen, apart from the right of vote and the possibility to stand for public office, or being able to leave Switzerland for any period of time without losing my status. Yeah, quite a lot still. In fact, after five years on Swiss soil, I was granted a sea permit. And to celebrate this milestone, I want to do a recap on how foreigners can settle down legally in Switzerland and how to obtain the Swiss citizenship. So, as I mentioned, after five years of working and living in Switzerland with a B permit, I fulfilled the criteria to be eligible for the C permit. But wait a second, B permit, C permit? What does it mean? Okay, right, let's start from scratch. If you want to work and live in Switzerland, whether you are European or from a country outside the EU, you'll need a resident permit. And according to your specific situation, you may fall into one of the following categories. Let's start with the B permit. Many of you will initially fall into to this category. In fact, if you want to live in Switzerland and you hold the contract for more than one year or limited, you will be granted a B permit. The B permit is directly linked to your job contract. But what does it mean? Let's make it simple. No more job, no more permit. No more permit, no more party. Bye bye Switzerland. The B permit can last up to five years and it can be then renewed for other five years for non-Europeans or turned into a C permit for EU citizens after fulfilling the relative criteria. On top of that, people from all EU without employment are entitled to a B permit if they can prove they have sufficient financial means and adequate health and accident insurance. With a B permit you will also have the right to ask for family reunification, at least for EU citizens, whereas for non-EU there's no automatic right to join family members. The local canton authorities can approve applications under certain conditions, for example if you can prove that you have enough living space for your family to live with you. You will also need to show that you can sustain all the family financially if you are self-employed or you are not working in Switzerland. One thing to keep in mind is that if you need to leave Switzerland while on B permit, you will automatically lose the permit. And if you then decide to come back, all the years already spent in the country will not count to obtain the C permit. Yes, you have heard it right. You will need to pile up years from scratch again. Once you have spent five years for Europeans, and 10 years for non-Europeans living and working in Switzerland and once all the criteria are fulfilled, you will be then considered eligible for C permit. Just what happened to me! But what are the criteria and what are the main differences with the B permit? Let's start from the main criteria. You should show successful integration. You should respect the Swiss legal system and constitutional values. You should know at least one of the national languages. For example, in Geneva Canton, you need to have an A2 level of writing and a B1 of speaking in French. And you need to prove it with a French certificate. And you should be willing to participate in the social and economic life of the country and adapt to it. A C permit holder will benefit from the right to settle in Switzerland without being subject to any time restriction or conditions. And as a Swiss citizen, you will be able to work for any employer you want, change job without permission, work, study and live anywhere in Switzerland, set up a company, access social and welfare benefits benefits by a real estate. The only things you are not allowed to do with the C permit, but you can only do it with Swiss citizenship, are vote, stand for public office and live in Switzerland for any period of time without losing your status. But pay attention, from the 1st of January 2019, the new law has included the possibility to downgrade from a C permit to a B permit when the applicant has breached the law or does not fulfill the integration requirements. Numero de téléphone deux points you forgot the accent holy cow give it back to me Okay, but what if I want to work in Switzerland and live in one of the neighboring European countries? Well, in that case, don't worry, you will not be the only one. You will be given a G permit. 
Cross-border commuters are citizens of EU member states who reside in one of the EU countries and work in Switzerland, either in an employed or self-employed capacity. Cross-border commuters must go back to their residence abroad as a rule every day, or at least once a week. And what about the non-Europeans? Third country citizens will only be given a G permit if they hold a permanent residence permit of a EU country. They also need to have had their residence in the neighboring country's border zone for at least six months. You are confused. My wife is too. Let's say you are Indian. You will be granted a G permit from Switzerland only if you have had your residence in a neighboring country, let's say Germany, for at least six months. Wait, wait, I have another scenario. What if I have a job offer in Switzerland of less than one year? Well, in that case, you will be considered a short-term resident who lives in Switzerland for a limited period of time, usually less than a year, and you will be granted the L permit. This possibility, of course, is available also for non-European citizens. But remember that the year spent under the L permit does not count when you apply for a C permit. If you were brave enough to watch this video up until now, will you deserve a gift? I will reveal to you a magic recipe to become a real 100% Swiss citizen. Yes, marry a Swiss citizen is an upfront. So if your perfect half is Swiss, all good for you. For the rest of us, the procedure will differ according to the canton you are living in. But in any case, you must have lived in Switzerland for at least 10 years and must be holding a C permit. Then, according to each single canton, you must have lived in the same canton or sometimes even in the same municipality for the last two to five years. This last requirement changes according to where you live. So check it out carefully if you aim for the Swiss passport. The Swiss to be must also be well integrated within the society and should prove through an exam to know culture, politics and history of the country. I've heard they can ask you the recipe to cook a good fondue. Whether true or not, you will find me in the kitchen. Which canton this flag belongs to? Which city is the one pointed out by the arrow? What is the capital of Switzerland? Okay, go ahead and start studying now. We will meet up in the kitchen. Okay, for today it's over. I hope you have loved this video. Remember to subscribe, to put the thumbs up, leave a comment below if you didn't understand anything of what I said, and let's see each other in the next video. Ciao!